we're going to first, before I go into my message, we're going to look at a verse. You know, let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. We'll look at verse 13. Today is a Father's Day. Uh, we want to thank our fathers. And we have some fathers here. And we probably have future fathers here. You know, we want to give them, you know, our hands, right? I think the current one we have is but richer. Unless you guys have been hiding someone, right? <laughs> <laughs> So let's give our fathers a hand, ladies, all right? Now, it seems like, you know, Mother's Day is, we have more celebration during Mother's Day. But like, Father's Day is just Father's Day. It's like things are taken for granted. But hey, you know, if you have, you know, a Bible-believing Christian father, you should be thankful. And there are many statistics out there where, especially in inner cities, and especially as time passes by, because of so many irresponsible people, over 50, 60, even 70 percent of the children grew up with single mom, you know, especially in inner cities, right? Imagine that. You know, like if there are 10 kids in a classroom, say in a, you know, some kind of a inner city neighborhood, seven of the kids don't have a father. And some of them don't even know who their father is. Think about it. You were born into this world. You're living with your mom, and she's all you know. All, all you know and you don't even know where your father or who your father is. So father's role is very important. Right? You're supposed to reflect God's character on your children. And as many young men here, you know, if you want to live by a verse and be like a man, be like a father that you need to be, it's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Let's look at it. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like man, be strong. And verse 14, let all your things be done with charity. The verse says, you know, you got to be awake. You know, as a man, you should be the one protecting the home. It shouldn't be a culture of where you know, all they talk about is quality, quality. But however, you're the head of the household. You should be the one protecting your wife, your children, and your family you know, from devil's attacks. You know, we, have, we live in a, such a gray, gray, watered down you know, Christian society where you know, if someone slaps you on the one chick, give the other chick, right? You know, you know, that's not how it works. Right? As a man of the house, if someone hurts your family, you know, it's my point, right? You know, don't go out there and say, oh, you know, this is what everybody says. No, you, know, you should fight back. You should protect your family. Right? If someone's hurting your children, are you going to just stand there and just pray? Oh, I pray for this soul, right? And then until your, your children get beat up completely? No, you go and fight. You protect your family. You know, God forbid if they touch your wife or hurt your wife, you know, I mean, they're going to pay for it as well. That's why you need to be watching as well as you need to stand fast in the faith. You know, if I were to look at man in this room, right, and if your family looks at you, and if they don't see that you're a man of faith, you know, you're not doing a good job as a man. Right? Whether you're young or whether you're old, but especially the older ones, you should have faith and you should be steadfast in your faith. Right? The one thing I appreciate about you know, our you know, new brother, Brother Mark, or Brother Mark over there, you know, I don't want to puff him up or anything, but he's a good testimony for everyone to listen to here and you know, on the Internet. You know, he loved you know, his family's soul. He loved him so much. So he, he got saved first. So that's the first thing. You know, as a man, you know, if you're a real man, I don't want to be cliche, right? But real men love Jesus, right? You know, real men accept and trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because Jesus Christ is the, you know, like the man of man, 
right? And he got saved. He, his brother got saved through Pastor Jim Kim's, you know, video. And he brought his mom, right? And his mom got saved last week, right? Sister Ines. And, I don't know, people have different emotions. But Brother Mark cried, right? I, mean, I think you will cry too if you love soul and if you really love your family's soul. And on top of that, you love your mom's soul so much and you love your mom that, you know, tears of joy flows down your eyes, right? Can you imagine? You know, because Sister Ines looks young, right? But I, I think she's, you know, still at least 30 years old, right? You know? <laughs> No, right? Yes. For those, <laughs> thank you. Right? Yes. So at least for those 30 years and years passes by, she did not know Christ like she should. She just heard of him. You know, just like everybody else, knew her in the head. But because, you know, of her son, you know, God opened the door. And through Sister Tracy, she heard the gospel. And she truly accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior and got saved, right? I mean, that's like a being a real man. I mean, a real man is someone that stands up for faith, no matter what. You know, one thing that you know, we lack about you know, Dr. Jin Kim, he stands up for his faith. He gets a lot of attacks from everybody. And he's a young man, right? I mean, he's a young man with PhD, and he has all the credentials. And obviously, and he's Asian too, right? And a lot of times, you know, all this faith and this were, you know, stood up and by, you know, like Caucasian people. So there's going to be, just because of the ethnicity issues, you know, there's going to be attacks, there's going to be jealousies, there's going to be envy. And he does some, you know, interesting titles right? and when you see his videos. You know, maybe sometimes you'll make his opposition or enemies happy by looking at the title until you start listening, you know, first few minutes and realize, you know, you know, what have I done myself to, you know? And he stands up for faith. And how is he able to stand up for his faith, stand fast in the faith because of his father? Right? Dr. Jin Kim is where he is because of his father. I could tell you that, you know, personally, because I live with the man as well. You know, I live with Pastor Jin Kim, me and my brother, you know, with his younger brother, you know, with Pastor Senior Kim. And I mean, he's like my father too, right? You have such a, how should I say, you, know, you have the greatest influence as a father to your children. And for some, Fathers here right now and future fathers, you have to remember, man, my responsibility after I got saved here on earth is probably greater than any other people because you are going to change people's lives. You're going to change your wife's life. You're going to change your children's life. Think about it. The people that you love most, you want to have most influence too. And that responsibility falls on you. If Lord tarries, our young Nathan, who's seven years old, and he's going to be a father, right? You know, I mean, think about that. And what is he going to learn to become a you know, godly father? Someone quit you like man, you know, who's like a man, right? Who doesn't act like a woman. You know, how? He's going to learn from his father. As much as he wants to learn from me or church brothers here and there, he sees his father the most, right? If his father does not watch, stand fast in the faith, quit you like man, and be strong, then many, many times children will fall. It is, it is not a 100% you know, excuse, but I believe it's a good excuse where you turned out to be how you are because of your parents. Man, it's kind of hard, right? You know, people who grow up in like whatever the circumstances are. You grow up in a single family home, you know, struggling. There's always gangs around you. You know, no one's helping you with anything. You know, you could rarely see your 
mom because she's working five jobs, you know, then you're going to have bad influence. In those instances, I mean, if the kid grows up and becomes something, that's why people get amazed. You know, a lot of people grow up in a you know, good middle upper you know, class. They don't know how that's like, right? I mean, you know, I grew up in the middle of Koreatown, you know, so I know like, how it is. That's why it is very important for you to think about it on this Father's Day. You know, think about how you're going to be like a father figure in the future. How you're going to be father figure right now. I mean, verse 14 tops it off everything. Let all your things be done with charity. Do you do it with charity? Whatever you do, right? When as a man, as a father, you know, as a hus husband of one wife, right? Do you do everything with charity? I mean, does, does your wife, you know, I mean, man, does your wife feel that charity whenever you do something? Right? As a human being, it's impossible to be perfect. But at least majority of the time, say, right? At least six out of 10 times. Let's give it a good majority. Does your wife feel that charity? Does she see that charity? Does she know that you're doing it with charity? Or does she see it because you do it because you have to do it? Now, that's not good. That's not a godly husband when you just do it because you have to do it. You have to do all things with charity if you are a Christian man. And as a young man in this you know, congregation, you have to start practicing it. You have to start doing everything with charity. And you know, sometimes it's hard for newly saved husband to put that into action. Because think about all the years that you lived as an unsaved, you know, God forsaking, you know, on your way to hell sinner. There are a lot of dirt that you need to clean up, right? Just simple shower is not going to work. You need to be in that hot water for a long time so that you could scrape up all those sins. However, young people here, you don't have as much dirt on your, I mean, you, you don't have as much, you know, sin on your body, right? So you have less to scrape off. Then you could stay more pure and holy. Then you could do more things with charity. Because as you grow up, as you live in sin, you know, you can't do with charity anymore because your head will be full of lust, right? Your head will be full of pride. Your head will be full of all these fleshly, worldly things. So as we look at these couple of verses, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14, you know, I say happy Father's Day to you, all men, but let's be that father, godly father that you and I ought to be. Let's turn our Bibles to, to our message today. Let's, let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. The title of the message is The Value of Patience. The Value of Patience. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message?
Yes. Amen. The value of patience. And without saying we live in a day and age, everybody wants things, you know, instantly. And you've heard many passages and many preachings regarding patience. And there's a lot of stories out there. We have freeway shootings because people are impatient. Uh, we recently had you know, a shooting in Orange County, in the city of Orange. You know, this guy shoots at a car, and the bullet goes through the car and hits the little kid. And then kid dies. You know, kid told his mom, you know, Ma, mommy, my, tom my tummy hurts. Think about that. You know, mommy hears, you know, the kid says, my tummy hurts. And then he's gone. Right? Because it happens because of impatient people out there. And there's a man in, you know, Los Angeles. He got, I guess he got charged for negligent discharge of a weapon. After shooting at what? Do you think he shot at a man, you know, at a car? No, he got charged because after shooting his toilet bowl uh, with a handgun, he was impatient. Why? He claims that he got so upset after his daughter flushed her hairbrush on the toilet. And it clogged the pipes. So he couldn't handle it. The toilet doesn't flush anymore, right? So he took out his handgun and blew up the toilet. But we don't know the condition of the toilet right now. Hopefully, you know, they, they, they have a you know, good workable toilet now. But the man's patience was gone, right? We heard some people say patience is a virtue. You know, possess it if you can. Found seldom in a woman. I mean, is that true, ladies? But never in a man. Uh, there's a lot of truth to it. Patience is something that's always trying. It's always trying. In order for you to grow in patience, you have to go through tribulation. You know, trials in your life will build patience in your life. Look at all those moments and all those times you commit a sin, before and after, both occasions. If you had some patience, you would have stopped a lot of sin that you have committed or you would have committed. If you waited a few minutes, you, you might not have gone into that store. If you waited a few seconds, you might not have listened to that thing. If you were more patient, you might not have gone into those dirty websites. If you were more patient, you might not have made this hasty decision. You know, it's life-changing decisions in your life. Even past week or weeks before, when I look at my own life, you know, if I were more patient, you know, I would have not sin as much. If I were more patient, I would have been more godly father figure. If I were more patient, I would have shown more charity. The reason you commit and you fall into sin over and over is because of your lack of patience. A lot of times, you are in such a hurry that you can't wait to do certain things. That's why when, impatient, when you're around impatient people, there always seems to be trouble. Right? There always seems to be trouble. Just the example of driving, right? Impatient people we're like, okay, let's go through the red light. Stop sign. There's no three-second rule. But we have a California rule, right? You stop for half a second, you know, put a brake light, and you just go through. Right? There's impatience that's shown in driving. 
And then what happens eventually? You know, there's a cop around somewhere, see you doing the rolling stop, and then you get your ticket. Or at a you know, rest stop, you know, where you have to make a complete stop before you make a right turn. Because of your lack of patience, you just make a rolling right turn, and there's happen to be a cop waiting in the corner and gives you a ticket. For some, you have experienced it. Every day presents challenge and training in regards to patience. Right? Are you the type of person when it comes to food? Like you have to have it. You know, people are weak when it comes to food, right? You're hungry. You, know, you can't wait. Sometimes you could see how a person's patience level is by how they deal with food. Have you been that person? Uh, where's my food? You know? Where's my food? You know? Where's my food? Right? So not every situation, you know, because each situation is you know, unique and different in its own way. But however, if you're like that all the time, then I'm going to have to say something's wrong with you. you know, either you're a glutton, you know, whether there's like some you know, beggar living in your stomach, as they say, or uh, you got you gotta something, you got to need some surgery or something in the future to survive. Patience is something that we haven't seen and we don't really see amongst people anymore. Especially with the advancement of technology, people just has to, people have to have something right away. Even when it comes to the Word of God, do you have patience? I just read a verse, you know, about the deep in the Word of God. You're like, ah, I need the answer right now. You learn about tribulation. I need to have the answer right now. And oh yeah, that that you know, tough doctrine about repentance. I need to have it right now. And instead of being patient for the Lord to open your eyes and learn accordingly, you make your own conclusions. You make your own you know thoughts. That's where a lot of people fall as a so-called Christians and Bible believers. You don't learn things. You don't learn your doctrines, you know, one step at a time. Person just got saved, right? And they need to start learning about doctrine of salvation. You know, they want to learn, you know, basic doctrines. And then you start talking to them about, you know, Adam's blood, you know, after he ate the fruit, right? And you start talking about, you know, all these judgments. And then you start talking about all these baptisms. You know, people think that there's water baptism, right? And then you start talking about, you know, baptism of fire. You start talking about all kinds of spiritual other baptism. It's going to overwhelm people. That's why you take step at a time. Impatient people, sometimes what happens is that they fall into this trap that devil has set. And instead of waiting and patiently learning, they start going out of their way and looking for different doctrine. That's where they go to Jehovah's Witness doctrine. They start learning about, you know, this other charismatic. They learn about, you know, Mormon. They learn about, you know, Tulip, Calvinist, you know, all this Armenianism, disciple ship, everything, lordship, salvation, and they become confused. They become confused. That's what the devil wants you to do. And then because of your lack of patience, you're like, okay, you know, Bible Baptist Church International, they, they, they teach some good stuff, right? But you know what? You know, I learned some other cool stuff, you know, over there at this church, over there at that church, over there, you know, that that place over there, you know. I mean, even, even that Catholic, you know, priest was, you know, saying some good stuff, you know. I mean, he never showed me the Bible, but, you know, something, some stuff, you know, in a confessional room, right, you know, taught me, it made me, you know, feel bad, but hey, you know, that's how it works. Then what happens? Because of your lack of patience to continuously read the Word of God, study the Word of God, you know, listening to doctrines and preachings, you know, on our YouTube channels or everywhere, you 
become a person full of confusion and you can't make the right choices anymore. Lack of patience always leads to wrong decisions. I mean, it's true. When husband and wife are not patient, and this father say again, you know, fathers, you need to be more patient. You're like, I'm a most patient father. No, you're not. You know, you need to be more patient. I mean, I could see, you know, all the ladies here shaking their head, right? You know, you are not patient enough. You need to work on your patience every single day. Imagine you and I, married people, if we were more patient when we're dealing with, you know, your wife or your family. Before you say that word, that will hurt the other party, right? Whether it's your wife or whether it's your children. If you are more patient, would you have gotten into less trouble? Yes, of course. Would you have, you know, avoided all those, you know, stare downs or, you know, not talking to each other or, you know, frowning faces? if you're more patient. Just like in a personal relationship, you have to be patient, and you have to be patient with what the Lord's doing in your life. A lot of times people commit sin, as in, for some, they're really, really hurting for money, financially. You know, we're not prosperity gospel where you go to our church, you come to our church, pay a lot of money, and then next week, you know, you're going to become a millionaire. Or weeks from now, you know, you're going to have a new mansion, you're going to have a new car, you know, everything's got to be good. No, it's never like that. But if you're not patient, whether you're a Bible believer or what not, when it comes to financial stuff, you're going to fall into temptation, and you're not going to defeat that temptation, and you're going to fall into sin. Like examples like, okay, you know this job's not good for you. It's going to put you away from church ministry, going to church, right? The job title, it says, work on the weekends. Saturday and Sunday, you must work. And because of your lack of patience, Lord, you know, I know that when I get into that position, I'm going to work really well, and I'm going to get regular shifts. Instead of weekend shift, I'm going to go to regular shift, right? So I could come to church, and I know you're going to work that out for me. What do you know? You take that job, we never see you for the next five years. You're just gone. Because you do have to make a living. But because of your lack of patience, because of that one wrong decision, you ruin your Christian testimony, as well as your Christian life. How many of you guys will be going through that in the future? Many of you, including myself. It's something that you and I will go through as an adult in this society where you have to make a choice of what kind of job you get. And if you're not patient, and if you only look at your front, right in front of you, your financial situation, you're going to make wrong decisions. And it's hard to, you know, make it better. Or some people will just do the wrong things. Right? It's funny when you hear a story, people, I go to Las Vegas to make money for church. I mean, is that really what God wants you to do? Or is that really what God will get glory out of? I mean, can you honestly give a testimony, you know, standing up, like, dear brethren, I gave, you know, $100,000 in tithe because I won some stuff in Vegas. With a clear conscience, I don't think you could do it, right? I mean, unless your conscience is seared with hot iron, you know, you're completely backslidden where you don't even know what's right or wrong anymore. There's no way you could be like telling your, you know, friends, even church people, hey, I make a lot of money, you know, knowing what the number's going to come up, right? I make a lot of money, you know, 
because I took a chance and some numbers came out on TV and then, you know, that's how I got my money. Will you be able to, you know, staff fastly, will you be able to, without any shame, and tell that to anybody? If any shame is involved, if there's any, you know, pricking in your heart from the Holy Ghost, if it's not the right thing to do, then it's not the right thing to do. That's where patience comes in. You're going to be in those tribulations where you're put in a spot where you have to make hard decisions. And in those times where you have to make hard decisions, if you don't work with patience and doing the things that what God wants you to do, living godly, doing what he wants you to do according to his will, then what's going to happen? You're going to fall in sin. If Lord did not answer you yet, then still wait. Be patient. Right? Some people are like, oh, I prayed about this for years. You know, I still haven't seen the result from the Lord. You know, it could be patience regarding salvation. You know, people get saved years and years after later because of your patience. Right? You continue to pray for them. You continue to pray for that person, whether you're going through hardship or whatnot. And especially, I know it's tough, in a family where you're the safe person, but the other person or the people are not. It really, really tests your patience. There are a lot of people throughout the history who give up their faith because of their lack of patience. They're like, oh, God, I can't take this anymore. And you know, my husband, you know, my wife, they're not saved. I've been praying that, you know, you help them get saved for like five, ten years, but they still aren't. I'm just going to keep up. And I can't take this anymore. I forget about church. You know? That's another thing that happens to people when because of your lack of patience, you think that God's not answering your prayer like you want it to be answered. You blame it on God, and then you start committing sins, thinking that that justifies it. I mean, God forbid, like some people are like, oh, God, I've been praying for my mate, my partner. You know, like Corinthians, I don't want to be you know, unequally yoked. And I'm praying and praying. You're, you're only like 25, okay? I wanted to get married when I was 24, Lord. Like, and then you, know, you make a wrong decision, and you marry the wrong person, and your life is over, right? You're living with a person who doesn't have the right faith. You're living with a person you, know, you knew from the beginning, wasn't the right person. And you knew that you made the wrong decision. And you recognize it, not right away though. After some time passes by, man, you realize, man, my lack of patience caused me this heartache, this, you know, trouble and this burden for a long time. Only if I made the right decision, only if I were more patient at that time. That's why a lot of people who are struggling with sin, you know, coming from a personal experience and listening to other brethren, it's because of your lack of patience. You just can't wait. You just don't have that patience. You just can't defeat that tribulation. Usually when trials come, you want the easy way out. You know, there's some of the synonyms, right, for patience. You know, one of the best synonyms, I think, is endurance. You need to endure. Right? You need to endure. If there are some you know, hard things going on in your life, you need to endure. Especially man, quit you like man. Be like a man and endure. I mean, ladies too, you have to endure. 
You know, whether it's coming from your unsafe family members, whether it's coming from your unsafe, you know, coworkers, you know, your bosses, you know, your direct reports, you know, unsafe friends, you have to endure. If your goal is for them to get saved at the end of the day, you have to show patience. You have to be patient. Right? Doing the hard things, you know, when it's going gets tough, it's the hardest thing to do. When your opposition, when people that you love tells you it's not the right thing to do, but you know it is the right thing to do according to the word of God, according to God's you know, doctrine, right doctrine, then no matter what the opposition is, you have to be strong, you have to be bold, and you have to continue. If coming to church, for example, if coming to Bible-believing church is really hard, you know, it's great to have, you know, Dakota, you know, and everybody else, right? Coming, you know, new people coming. But the hardest thing after coming to a Bible-believing church is staying in the Bible-believing church. Maybe it's harder, right? Because it requires patience to learn the Word of God. It requires patience to have fellowship with the brethren. You know, tell me about it. Do you have patience amongst your brethren? It's, it's, you know, it's something that you have to learn until the Lord comes back or until you die. Because there's got to be people, unlike clubs or social gatherings where you meet, it's based on your own interest. Bible-believing church, you're here just because of the Word of God. However, personality is 100% different. Some people might like dogs. Some people might like cats. But you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and you believe in the King James Word of God, and you believe right doctrine. And you guys are together in a room. Dog person, cat person. But you don't see eye to eye. Man, when, when cat person hears about a dog, you, you, you don't like it. When a dog person hears about a cat, man, you can't stand it. However, if you want to grow as brothers and sisters in Christ, you have to be patient with each other. You have to understand, you know, they love what they love because how they, were grow, I mean, how they grew up. Right? Can you imagine? You know, we put... Someone who came from, you know, say, you know, south, right? You know, where Dr. Ruckman was, and we put someone from California, right? In the same room, man, that's one thing that, you know, they can't stand, you know? You know, sometimes people from the, you know, south sees the California people as the devils, right? Because all the wicked stuff, you know, kind of originated from the California, right? You know? However, just because they're from California or just because they're from, say, Alabama, are you going to be like, you know what? I'm going to go hang out with people from California only. I can't stand those people. Or are you going to work your patience where you're going to try to be that brother or sister who shows charity? You know, it, it takes patience to listen to things that you don't want to listen to. How are you ever going to witness to someone if you don't have patience, right? If little Nathan wants to only talk about Pokemon, right, or Digimon, and I have no interest in it at all. However, I want to witness to this kid, right? And I listen to it. Yeah, yeah, right, man. And they show interest. Oh, yeah, I even do some study in Pokemon and Digimon and say, you know, Pikachu is the best, right? And then it opens up the door, and then you could witness to the kid, or the other way around. I mean, how much do you know about people who come to our church? You know, patience, you know, you need effort, right? You say, I want to love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Where's your effort? Where's your patience? Patience is involved. When you are in a relationship, and I say this because some people will get married and some people, you know, is looking for a relationship because you're at the age of marriage, you have to work on patience, right? 
you have to listen more. If you listen to the Lord more than you are talking to him, I'm sure you are a better Christian today. I'm sure I'll be a better Christian today. If you listen to your spouses more than you talk to them, you know, you listen fervently, then you'll be a better husband and you'll be a better wife. And same thing with children. If you listen to your mom and your dad more than you are talking to them, and not just listening one year to get it out of the other year, but actually put it in your heart, then you'll be a better children. You want to be a better child of God, right? Be patient. Listen to him. Listen to what he says through his word, through the preachings, right? Listen. Don't just try to get this, you know, 45 minutes just out the window so you could go to break time, drink some coffee, and, you know, just, just lollygate with some people. You know, just listen and be patient. Because when you're patient, Lord will give you the answer, your answer, that's best for you. Many times, you and I make hasty decisions, and it leads to a lot of, lot of, lot of headache and a lot of heartache. And we don't want that anymore. If you've been doing that in the past, you know, get that out of the way. You know, God is God of grace and mercy. Thank God for that. You and I have multiple chances. Here's another chance coming our way. Tribulation will inevitably come your way. Trials will come your way. Knowing that tribulation works as patience, what will you do from now on? Will you be more patient? Would you seek the Lord? Would you be more long-suffering? Or will you be like your old self, make that hasty decision, wrong decision, fleshly decision, worldly decision, devilish decision, and fall and fall deeper into your sin and be farther and farther away from the Lord? Just like the Bible says, Tribulation worketh patience. You want to get closer to God? You want to be a blessing to others? Let that tribulation really work your patience instead of making or leading or letting those tribulations fall you into sin over and over and over. Lord will test you because Lord wants you to become a better Christian, better child. Just like if you're a parent, you want your children to become better by testing them here and there. As you get those testings, as you go through tribulation and trials, remember that you can find strength in the Lord. You know, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And part of that strength is the patience that the Lord gives you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are patient with us, Lord. Your long-suffering towards us, even though we deserve to burn in hell, you gave us this grace and mercy through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we can get saved, Lord. However, as a Bible-believing Christian, we do not show patience, Lord. We always want things in our way. It's my way or the highway, as they say. Help us to Remember that patience requires endurance, work, our effort, Lord God. And as we are put in this tribulation trials, Lord, help us to defeat those trials and tribulation by 100% holy, relying on you and trusting in you, Lord. When those tough times come, help us to turn to you instead of turning to the world and the flesh and the devil, Lord. Whenever there's patience required, help us to look unto you, Lord, as a great example, and help us to follow your lead, and help us to put ourselves in the word of God and your preachings when those times of patience require. Lord God, we put you know, Pastor Cash Shrive, Pastor Mike Shrive, Pastor Meg Crane and their families, Lord, in our prayers, Lord, please heal them according to your will, and please strengthen them 
and strength of family members. And I pray that, Lord God, help us to keep good testimony and be a witness for you in this world, God-forsaken world. Help us to be that light in this world where people could really see what we have and so that we could be a better witness for you. Bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.